What up and welcome back to another Malazan Book of the Fallen video. This time we have three objectives. We're going through the winners and losers of round two in the Malazan's Most Powerful Mage competition. We're going to uh, discuss the brackets, therefore, that flow into the next round of the competition. And then we're going to announce the winners, the two different winners we have for the giveaway. So uh, let's get into it. All right, so we got through that uh, second round, I guess, of the uh, the tournament. I feel like it wasn't as dramatic the, as the first set of matches where there was really just some really eye-popping matchups and just crazy battles that I honestly didn't know which way they were going to go. There were some upsets, and we joked how uh, when you looked at some of the people who made it through, like Twisty, uh, and some of the people like Race and Sin who didn't make it through, it's just kind of uh, th that first round had a lot of drama and crazy clashes. This time, there wasn't as many close matches, and there probably wasn't as many disappointments, but what's really cool is that it does set up like a pretty exciting, uh, you know, series of matches that are going to filter down. And I think the semis and quarterfinals and then that final is going to be pretty contentious. And we're going to get a lot of people uh, pretty heated on both sides, no matter who starts winning going forward. So uh, let's go through the matches from last time, starting with the... Uh, Talamandes and Beludrin Skull Crusher. This one was pretty much a blowout with Beludrin uh, grabbing that little stick snare and uh, and crushing his skull, as you would expect. So 65-35, pretty decisive on that one. Uh, the the next one that we'll talk about is Han and Mosag versus Hairlock, and that's kind of like uh, I guess he was curled Emerlin, but he's kind of, uh, you know, got a little chaos component, as does Hairlock. But again, total blowout, 75% of you said that uh, Han and Mosag wipes out Hairlock, and I think you gotta, you gotta agree with that one pretty much, because, uh, you know, Han and Mosag has some, without getting into too much spoilers, he's got some, some pretty crazy feats to his name. Um, the biggest blowout of all of round two was the rematch. Um, Quick Ben, who took down both Corbel Brooch and Bauchelaine. And maybe I guess I'll bleep all that out. But uh, Cor he took down Corbel Brooch in the rematch, 98% to 2% there. So a very um, decisive victory. In the next matchup, we had the Panny and Seer, pretty much obliterated Nil and Nether, who we love and, you know, who suffered tremendously and, again, don't want to get too spoilery, but 68% uh, of you said that the Panny and Seer would wipe out Nil and Nether, even teamed up together, I guess. Uh, I don't know if that's with or without the horse. We didn't uh, include the ground rules there, but... Yeah, I think I got to agree with that result. So uh, next up, and this one was one that I think was contentious, at least in the Discord, and at least for me personally, in my mind, is that we had uh, Silver Fox wiping out Bad Dell 75% to 25%. I don't know. Uh, let me know down in the comments what you think, but I think I chalk this one up to uh, maybe not everybody who's gotten all the way through the end of the main 10 books. It's it's a really tough matchup, I think, either way. But but I think that that margin I can chalk up to again. Not many people familiar with Bad Dell. At least that's a theory. Again, let me know down below. Next up, we had Hoods Warren going crazy because Cowl was going up against Bauchelaine, and we saw that the uh, the the Crimson Guard Master Assassin took down the Necromancer, and I think, again, that one was controversial, but again, we chalked that one up, at least in the Discord, we felt like that was probably because not everybody's read the novellas, and so all you really know is the the bit that you see during Memories of Ice, and also Quick Ben is just a straight-up G, and so it's hard to really know how badass Bauchelaine really is until you get into those novellas. Be that as it may, Bauchelaine is out, Cowl is in, 
and uh, and he moves forward. The next one was the second highest actual margin of victory. And I think you guys maybe underrated Shell a bit. I still give it to Lorik, uh, the high mage from Raraku and and part of Sheikh's army, et cetera, et cetera. But he really blew it out, 95% to 5%. So, uh, yeah. Next up, we had uh, Pearl going up against Endis Salon. So this is kind of like the Curl Galane or the, the Battle of Darkness or whatever. And even though, you know, I see Endis Salon kind of lost his fighting spirit if you're taking him straight out of the books. But uh, a lot of you, 70% of you, said that he would still stomp, uh, stomp out Pearl who was not just a, a pretty powerful mage, but also just a, a pretty G'd up assassin. And we saw him do some pretty crazy stuff throughout the course of the books with his girlfriend and all of that. But uh, yeah, Pearl is out and he's back in the locker room licking his wounds now. Then we had Gethel going up against Twisty and that one was uh, you know, pretty much decided the second it was announced and indeed um, Gethel had the third highest margin of victory with 94% of you saying that he would make it through. And uh, yeah, you know, you just got to give it up. The Jaggets we meet in the series are just pretty insanely powerful and that shows in, in the tournament. He's arguably Ascendant and we kind of battled in the comments about this, but he isn't totally Ascendant. He's definitely not worshipped by anybody or a god by any means. And so um, I think that was a fair uh, W. The next one, and I don't know if people are just humoring uh, poor old Blues, who I love to death, or what. You're my boy, Blue! But Blues only lost by 80, a margin of 88 to 12. Now, I thought that could have easily just been straight up 100%. 12% um, of you, of 277 of you, um, actually voted for Blues and thought they would take out Krupp. I think... Next time, I'm going to make sure to lay out the ground rules just of how the duel happens and whether you can, like, you know, like the Vork and Tattersail one. Is 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 it just the Majory, or can she use her kind of assassin abilities, too? And I should have made that uh, more clear. But again, Krupp moves on, and Blues is out. Next, we had, who again, we kind of argued whether Ocean Prawl is even really a mage or not. He's the kid of, and if you don't want spoilers cover your ears for a second, but of Kalava and Onrak the Broken. So we kind of assumed that he had some, uh, you know, ability to access uh, Telen, but he uh, he beat Fingers, who was, again, an avowed Crimson Guard mage. Uh, so that one was, I again, I probably would, would say that one was more of the one of the questionable outcomes. Then we had the Setakuru Khan, who took out the absolute, and let's take a minute to just pour one out for our boy, uh, Bottle. One for me, and one for my homie. Bottle went down 73 to 27, and I gotta say, I, I tend to uh, agree with that one as much as I love Bottle. If the setup was coming in prepared, you know, he... Uh, he took down many Eder mages at, at one time. And so, um, you know, hate to see Bottle go, but I got to say, I agree with the majority of you guys out there. Um, next one, and actually, I think Tayshren does have the third biggest margin of victory. He boots finally Banatis Senegar out 96 to 4%. I got to say, he's probably one of the favorites to make it into the final four. And uh, but I don't want to bias the, the results because he's got a tough matchup, as we'll see here in a minute. But Bonatus really had uh, no business being in there with Sin already back in the locker rooms. You kind of can't really justify Bonatus still being in. It was just one of those crazy luck of the draw type of scenarios that finally corrected itself here in round two. The next one we had you know, arguably two of the most powerful mages that we've seen. One definitely, I think, is the most powerful that we've seen, but Beak was taken down by Iskarol Pust. And, and I think, again, this one doesn't come down to just raw power because I think Beak probably has him beat there. But just in terms of conniving, uh, killer instinct, slyness, I think that's probably what got Iskarol that or people just haven't gotten to uh, to Reaper's Gale yet. But Beak did command 41% of the vote. And I agree that he's one of the most powerful characters that we see in the whole series. But uh, just in terms of lacking that killer instinct for attorney setting, I, I kind of agree 
with the result here, even though it absolutely uh, breaks my heart. You know, let's take a minute and pour one out for B2. I miss you so much, it hurts sometimes. And then last but not least, in the 16th round, we had Topper, the master of the claw, taking out Wittershins, who again was one of those ones who probably shouldn't have made it all the way through to the second round by a margin of 94% to six percent so uh that is is a lot of fun and you know wasn't as many crazy upsets but with both beak and bottle going out we definitely had that kind of heartbreak factor and it really sets up some pretty crazy matches here for the third round so let's get into the third round matchups Ah, and before we do that, actually, I forgot really quick. I was going to get to be the tiebreaker, and I skipped over this one because I didn't want to be the bearer of bad news early on, but it looked like exactly 50-50 for Vork and Tattersail. So I haven't been voting in any of these, and I was going to go through and actually uh, click through and vote, but what I've done is uh, is if you actually zoom in on the results, you can see that just by a tiny hair, even though it says 50-50, you can actually see that bar for Borkin is slightly ahead. And so I'm going to I'm gonna stick with that popular opinion, and we're going to put the, uh, the mistress of the uh, assassins cabal or, or guild in Darugistan through into round two as well. So let's check out those matchups. <laughs> All right, so what that means for going forward is that we've got uh, Baludrin going up against Vorkin, Mistress of Assassins. We've got Hannon Mosag going up against Quick Ben. And so that one's going to be a pretty gnarly matchup. This left-hand side of the bracket isn't as heavy hitting, I feel like, as the right side. But we do have Panny and Seer then going up against Silver Fox. And so I think that uh, that might be a wrap for Silver Fox. But we'll see what happens. And then we've got High Mages going up against each other as Cowl goes up for the Crimson Guard against Lorik for, I don't know if it's still called for the Whirlwind or not. I'll let you uh, judge there, but that's a pretty pretty even matchup, I would say, um, just in terms of pure magic, right? Cal's obviously got the assassin bit, but uh, Lorik is no, uh, is no pushover when it comes to the Majory. And then on the right-hand side of the bracket, things are a little bit more interesting. We've got Endis Salon going up against Gethel. And so those are two uh, elder race gangster leans going on. So we'll have to see there. But then we've got uh, Krupp the Slob going up against Ocean Prawl. So that is going to be an interesting one, too. But then the last two are the ones I think that really set up the drama for next time around. But we've got Seda Kuru Khan going up against Tay Shren. And that is one for the ages. That's arguably what it would all come down to if we saw the two empires ever square off or what it would have uh, back in the day if they would have ever went toe to toe. So we'll get to kind of um, see test that theory out, shall we say. And then uh, last but not least, we've got the Magus of Shadow, Iskaral Pust. Um, not sure if he's bringing his broom or not, but he will be taking on uh, the head of the claw, the claw master himself, Topper. So uh, yeah, that is going to be pretty crazy. We should get through it in about eight days and then see who we have for the semifinals. But Let's just go into speculation mode, right? We got to, uh, because this sets up some pretty crazy stuff because we could see like a quick Ben Vorkin um, semifinal or like an Iskaral Pust Tayshren or Iskaral Pust Seta Kuru Khan, um, you know, and then even again, once we get down to the quarterfinals, like a Krupp Iskaral Pust face off or a Krupp Tayshren. Um, yeah, lots of possibilities or like a quick Ben, um, cowl 
fit, you know, squaring off in the final four to see who eventually makes it. So I think this round is going to be exciting, but I think the next couple of rounds in general, just how this is all shaping up to filter down should be uh, a lot of fun. And so I'm really looking forward to it again. Thank you guys so much for voting in this and doing it. Some of those ones were getting two and a half or 250, 300 votes. So it seems like you guys are enjoying this just as much as I am. And I've um, got lots of good plans over in the Discord for future competitions. So with that all being said, um, let's get on to the final order of business and get on to that giveaway. We had uh, 30 people participate, and I just want to say thanks so much to the sponsor of this competition who asked not to be named, but uh, just such a huge supporter and just appreciate so much the willingness to uh, not just support me and the channel, but to support this giveaway to get you guys some stuff and especially to get you into those books and just reading along. So uh, what we did was we went ahead and went through all of the comments for the uh, most powerful mage announcement video when I announced the round of 32. I dumped them all into a spreadsheet over here, both for the uh, veteran prize. On the left, there was 25, and then only five people commented recruit wanting the book. So uh, what we're going to do is go ahead and let Siri have a shot at this this time around. So there's um, they're just alphabetical and numbered 1 to 25, and so we'll uh, go ahead and select the winner of the uh, books first, I guess, since that's kind of, I guess, the smaller prize. Hey Siri, pick a random number between 1 and 5. That would be 3. 3. So the winner of the two book giveaway is going to be Lord Sinbad. So uh, congratulations. That's awesome. I hope you enjoy the books. Comment below or hit me up through the Discord, which you probably should have joined for the competition. Or you can hit me up on Facebook or I think my email is in the about section of the channel or in the description down below. And we'll figure out the best way to, uh, to get you your two books. And now for the grand finale, we'll do the uh, the merch giveaway, which I think was the Pust Pest Control mug, a one of the Fallen shirt, and a Witness uh, sweatshirt, or vice versa. So we can work out the exact details of whichever one you want um, once we get that all sorted out. So uh, Siri, hey Siri, pick a random number between 1 and 25. A random number between 1 and 25 is 14. 14, which means that the stuff goes to John Lynch. It's John Lynch. So, uh, yeah, awesome. I, I hope you guys enjoy the books, enjoy the merch. Um, thank you so much to the sponsor, and thank you to all of you for participating. It's been so cool and fun just waking up every morning and see who's voting for who in the brackets. And so, uh, yeah, we will go ahead and get started with round, well, with the Sweet 16, I guess it is, um, on Monday. And we're going to go back to just one match a day. I think two matches per day was a little bit hard to keep track of, but now... Um, you know, we should only have eight matches, so it'll just take a week to get through anyway. But things are really heating up. I think once we get through this kind of sweet 16, we have some really heated semis, uh, I think we're poised to have coming up. So it should be really fun right down to the grand finale, and you can kind of get a sense of how it's all uh, shaping up. So yeah, if you're not subscribed already, get subscribed. Come along for the ride. Uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Join that Discord. We've been just taking, you know, again, I don't want to take the money off the uh, the YouTube and the Patreon and all of that stuff. We're pumping it back into the channel. We got new bots, uh, the paid versions for the Discord. We got a lot of new folks in there and uh, got a new song purchased for my Dead House Gates trailer video. So just lots of cool stuff coming up. So uh, yeah, click that subscribe. Give it that thumbs up so we get more of those Mezlas. Uh, into the uh, the 13th army and yeah until the next one happy reading <laughs>